Hi, I'm Mr. V, and this is Illustrative Mathematics. This is from Algebra 1 for Algebra 1B course. It's from Unit 2, and it's Lesson 1, called Planning a Pizza Party. So our first thing was, by the end of this lesson, these are the objectives, what you're supposed to get out of this lesson. You can tell what a constraint is. You can tell the difference between values that are constant and ones that are changing, or vari that are variables, you know. And you can also create equations that model real world equa uh, real world situations. So the first part of this was the warm up and they were given some letters and the amounts, the costs were in dollars. So M represents the main dish and the cost of the main dish, which was in dollars. N is a number of side dishes. It is not a, uh, a, a dollars amount. It's the, how many side dishes there are. S would be side, you notice the S stands with the side, S is for the cost of the side dish, and T would represent the cost of the meal. So you're supposed to answer, what do each of these expressions mean? Well, M is equal to 750. The cost of the meal is 750, $7.50. That's what that means. Here's one, M is equal to S plus 450. Now don't tell me M is equal to S plus 450. I know what the equation is. Tell me what it means. The equal sign means, is or is the same as or is equal to if you wanted to say it that way so you could say the cost of a meal is equal to uh, the cost of the side dish plus 450. now i didn't tell you here that the main dish was 750 but if it was then you could find out what the s is what the side dish would cost here we have n times s is equal to six well n is the number of side dishes and s is the cost of a side dish. So if I have one side dish, it would cost so much. If I had a second side dish, it would cost a third so much. If I had a third side dish, it would cost so much. But altogether, all n of my side dishes would total six dollars. So n times six, that means if I had six groups of, or if I had n groups of the side dishes, that would be a six dollars. What does this mean in context of it? Well, the total cost of the meal is the cost of the main dish plus however many sides I have times the cost of each side dish. Does that make sense to you? Can you see how we're using these letters to, to come up with different values uh, or expressions for real world type of situations? Then you're supposed to write your own and then explain your thinking. So if I wrote like uh, M is equal to, I'm going to just come up with my own here, pen and use the blue number. If M, the main cost, of, the main dish, the cost of the main dish, plus I'm going to say I have two side dishes, and I'm going to say that that's equal to $12, because my mine is really expensive. And if at the same time, I also told you that the main dish is equal to $6. You could actually find out what the cost of the side dish is, couldn't you? Because this would be equal to this. You could actually substitute this value in for the main dish. Meh. Okay. So here's some questions to ponder for this, for this warm-up. First of all, what is an equation? An equation is not just an expression. An equation has to have an equal sign. This means the same as, or is, is the way you would translate it. Can Equations contain only numbers. Yeah, you could have 3 plus 7 is equal to five, uh, 10. You could also have letters. You could have 3 plus X is equal to 10 and then solve for it. You could have just letters if you wanted to. Letters could be something that varies or something that changes, or it could be something that is a constant. We just use a, vari a letter to, to represent it. So in the last question, could this be true? Let's see, the cost of a meal plus 5, that would be dollars, is equal to T. That would be true, wouldn't it? Well, it could be true. Let's see if the cost of the meal was seven fifty, and the, you're adding five dollars. Maybe you're putting in a dessert there in addition to a side or something. I don't know what this would be. What might false equation today? One of the students wrote. He said I could have this would be false. N plus the cost of the meal is equal to the total. That would not work. M is in dollars. That's the dollars. The cost of the meal. T, the total cost is in dollars, and this is just a number. This is not dollars, so you can't just add dollars and, and number and make it equal to dollars, so that, that would not work. Another thing that might not work is if you had a negative number, so like if I had the cost of the meal is equal to a negative 17. Oh, waiter, there's a fly in my soup. What do I do? 
can you give me $17 back or whatever? No, they're not going to give you money back. They'll probably give you a voucher for, for doing it, but they're not going to give you money back. So that, that's probably pretty unreasonable. That would probably be a false equation. Here, one equation tells us that the main dish is equal to 750. And another equation tells us that it, the main dish, is equal to S plus 450. And could both of these be true? Well, sure they could. The main dish is 750. And the main dish tells us that it, the main dish, is equal to a side. So on the, on the main plate, you're going to have maybe a piece of chicken or a steak or fish. And you're going to have some broccoli and mashed potatoes or something on the side. So the side, what this would tell us is that the side is going to be $3. If you subtract $4.50 from both equations, you set these equal to each other, subtract this from both sides, you get the side would have to be $3. Yeah, they could both be true. So in today's class, we planned a pizza party. And we went through a lot of different steps. And many of you were able to say right off, oh yeah, I know how much a pizza costs. Why? Because of your experience. You've been to uh, Little Caesars, you know that you can get a $5, you can get a, a pepperoni pizza pre-made, ready to go and ship it out. If you, I found out this weekend when I was taking my grandchildren that if you, if I want to get something with everything on it, they have to cook it. And it costs $10, not $5. So the kids got two pepperoni pizzas. You don't like pepperoni? Just take it off. You know, and I got the, the, the five meat thing, pizza for $10. Anyway, you can estimate how, how much it's going to be, and you can put a variable in there. Let's see, the cost of the pizza would be P for pizza, I don't know, you N for the number of people that they're going to be. Maybe you put in D for the drinks and the cost of the drinks. Anyway, you write down your expressions and you can tell which things are going to be variable, which ones are going to be fixed. And you, what I want you to come up with is what is reasonable? What, what kind of constraints are reasonable? Like, would it be reasonable to, to pay $20 for a pizza? I don't know. Maybe if you go to Tavola's, you pay $20 for a pizza. And maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's really good. Uh, $50 for a one pizza? That's pretty unreasonable. I know I'm not going to pay a million dollars. I'm not going to pay a thousand dollars for pizza. I'm not made of money. Money doesn't grow on trees. So there are some limitations. And maybe if you're doing this for a school, for a party, for maybe five of you or something, well, you got to figure out how many pieces is each person going to eat. So you got to come up with these expressions. That's what we're doing today is coming up with expressions for real world situations. And so when we synthesize this part of the activity, we have to ask, what, come up, what expressions did you come up with? Did you include the number of students in the class? Maybe five people were coming to your party. Oh, yeah, one of them was a football player, and he eats a full pizza by himself. Everybody else gets two slices. I don't, I don't know how you figured this out. But number slice, slice per person. You need to work in the cost of delivery. My daughter used to deliver pizzas in college. That didn't last very long. Why? Because she delivered to college students, and they did not tip. And that's not very good. So cost of delivery, you really ought to pay the person if you're getting it delivered. Give them a tip because they don't make that much money. Anyway, price for toppings. Okay, you're getting pepperoni, and that's it because I'm not paying for your extra toppings. You like anchovies? Who likes anchovies? Anyway, did you think of other things? What expressions could you come up with? Anyway, here's the big point. One of the big points of this lesson, constraints. A, crane is, a constraint is something that limits uh, what is possible or what is reasonable in a situation. For example, maybe you say you have to eat less than four pieces. So you say less, or the, the number of slices would be less than four pieces or so, less than four. Maybe you look at what you wrote and you see, like for instance, number greater than 50 or whatever, let's see, what else can we say? Constraints. You can write constraints with a less than or greater than symbol. Uh, here's some ideas of constraints. You order online, the constraints are the drink is 250. And, oh no, there's a fee, 250 fee no matter what you do. You have to pay the 250. And the cheese pizza is nine dollars. And that's fixed. So constraints could be fixed. They can also be variable. Okay, I'm giving you some money for budget. You have you have to spend at least twenty dollars, but you might be able to, or twenty five dollars, but you might but you cannot spend no more than ninety dollars. So now we we had a church a church meeting this summer, and we spent, we gave them $100, we spent $100. And you know what happened? Half the people came that were supposed to. It rained. So we ended up with like 12 dozen eggs and five containers of milk and of, of orange juice and four pounds of bacon that 
we ended up having to take home and we had quiche for a month. I'm telling you, it was, it was pretty bad, but that's because we spent according to our constraints, but the things varied. The number of people is a variable. It can, it's something that could change. So you can write expressions. Let's see, in planning a pizza, gather information for the cost. What did you do to use together? Most of you use personal experience or something else. Anyway, um, certain, certain things could change. How could the cost of a slice of pizza change? Maybe you add extra toppings. I don't know what it is. So there's different things that you could, variables that you could put in or letters that you could put in for estimating the cost. And the last thing you're supposed to do is estimate the cost for your entire class. And that's, that's pretty much all we had for today. So good luck and success.